All right. Hey, it's Mr. Shrum, and we're going to finish up the circulatory system right now by looking at some of the issues that can develop with the circulatory system. So we've seen how the circulatory system plays a crucial role in keeping each part of the body healthy. Without blood, without oxygenated blood getting circulated through your body, you wouldn't last long. Uh, you need this to live. And issues from mild to severe can cause problems for different parts of the body. And a few of the issues we're going to look at today are varicose veins, myocardial infarction, and arrhythmia. Varicose veins are veins that are enlarged and twisted. They are typically found in the legs and feet due to the increased vein pressure when standing and walking. The symptoms of varicose veins are typically not painful, but can include dark purple blue veins, veins that twist and bulge under the skin, aching, throbbing, cramping, or swelling in the legs, increased pain from extensive sitting or standing, itching around the veins, skin ulcers by the ankle. Varicose veins risk factors. So what could cause um, these to occur? Well, natural vein deterioration from aging naturally occurs. Women have an increased risk due to female hormone changes, genetics, added pressure on the veins from obesity, extensive standing or sitting. And how do you treat this? Well, you have a few options. Losing weight and exercising can help with varicose veins. Compression stockings, so these tight sock-like um, pairs of clothing can hug your body close and that can help with the veins. Elevating the legs when you sit, taking breaks from standing or sitting, that's always good, yeah. If you're sitting for too long, um, everyone gets a little sore. Surgery to close and remove veins. Well, how do you prevent these in the first place? They're not fully preventable, but increasing blood flow and muscle tone can help prevent and treat discomfort from varicose veins. Helpful practices include um, maintaining a healthy weight and exercising, keeping a diet high in fiber and low in sodium, avoiding tight clothing and high heels, elevating the legs when sitting, taking regular breaks from sitting and standing, Myocardial infarction, that is the next issue. And that is a heart attack. So that's when a blood clot keeps blood from entering part of the heart muscle. And that part of the heart can become damaged or destroyed due to the lack of blood. And heart attack can be fatal and it requires very immediate medical attention. And they can vary greatly for each individual. There may be no symptoms at all, varying degrees of symptoms, or even um, it may begin with sudden cardiac arrest when the heart stops beating altogether. Many people experience symptoms days before having a heart attack, although myocardial infarction can also begin very suddenly. Here are some of the symptoms chest or arm pain, pressure or aching that can spread to the neck, jaw, or back, abdominal pain, heartburn, indigestion, nausea, or fullness, shortness of breath, or dizziness, fatigue and trouble sleeping, anxiety or sweating. And the risk factors for heart attacks include being a male over 45, or a female over, over 55. So males tend to have them earlier in life, earlier than females do at least. 
smoking or using illegal drugs that can um, cause your heart to work harder than it would typically need to, high blood pressure or cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, or failure to exercise regularly, family history of heart attacks, or personal history of preeclampsia. Stress. So chronic stress can cause heart issues as well. How do you treat heart attacks? Well, we have medications that thin blood, prevent clots, lower blood pressure, etc. Coronary artery bypass surgery can restore blood flow to the heart, and then coronary angioplasty and stenting can remove blocks and hold arteries open. So you can see the um, steps in angioplasty right here. So you have arteries, but you see this plaque buildup around the walls of the artery. They insert a, a balloon, they expand that balloon, and then they deploy these stents. And that compresses the plaque and opens up the artery. How do you prevent heart attacks? Well, there are medications, exercising and eating healthy, controlling weight, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and diabetes, not smoking, and stress management can help you. So I hope you're, you're noticing some trends, right? Um, exercise and eating healthy, controlling your weight, um, not smoking. So those are things within your power um, for the most part. You can, you can make an effort to uh, exercise and eat healthy and that can prevent having to take all these medications and get all this surgery done later in life. So prevent things if you can. And the last issue we're going to look at is arrhythmia. And we, descri we described that a bit in the last um, section in the heartbeat, right? This is a EKG of a normal heartbeat. Notice it's very regular. And then we have other types of weird rhythms. So the heart rhythm problem is caused by the failure of electrical impulses to correctly coordinate the heartbeat. Arrhythmias can be too fast, too slow, or irregular. irregular. And they're categorized by speed, as well as whether they originate in the atria or ventricles. Arrhythmia speeds include a fast heartbeat, tachycardia, tachycardia. And then bradycardia. So tachycardia is a fast heartbeat, and that's over 100 beats per minute when you're not doing anything um, strenuous. It's like if you're just sitting at your computer and your heart's going 100 beats per minute for no reason. The bradycardia, bradycardia is a slow heartbeat. So that's under 60 beats per minute. Having a lower heart rate between 60 and 70, that can be a sign of healthiness. Um, but if it gets too low, that's when things get a little tricky. Ventricular fibrillation, that's when electrical impulses to the ventricles are disorganized and cannot properly propel blood out of the heart. And that needs, <clears throat> needs immediate medical attention. So. We talked a bit about that last time. And moving on, heart arrhythmias do not always have noticeable symptoms. However, some of the perceptible symptoms are slow racing or fluttering heartbeats, chest pain, shortness of breath, feeling lightheaded or dizzy, near or actual fainting. risk factors. So what can cause arrhythmias? Heart conditions, congenital heart disease, or prior heart surgery. 
high blood pressure, thyroid problems, certain medications, diabetes, obstructive sleep apnea. That's when you're sleeping and you have trouble um, uh, breathing when you're actually asleep. That's a, uh, and you're, you're actually waking up several times throughout the night. It's uh, not great to have sleep apnea. Consuming caffeine, nicotine, or large amounts of alcohol. Abnormal electrolyte levels. How do you treat it? It's not always necessary for those who have an arrhythmia. Those who are at risk of developing a more serious arrhythmia or suffer from serious symptoms may receive one of the following treatments. Slow heartbeats. Um, Treatments can be correcting low thyroid levels, switching to a medication that does not slow the heart, a pacemaker, uh, that's a device that's placed near the collarbone during surgery. Wires with electrodes connect the pacemaker to the inner heart, allowing it to control the heart rate through electrical impulses. Fast heartbeats. Um, treatments can be uh, tricks using uh, holding your breath and straining, coughing, or immersing your face in ice water can stop some fast heartbeats. Medications like blood thinners or arrhythmia controlling drugs, electrical shock, um, cardioversion can reset the heart's rhythm. Ablation therapy destroys small pieces of heart tissue cutting off the electrical pathway responsible for the arrhythmia, coronary bypass surgery. Other treatments include an implantable cardiovertidefibrillator uh, or ICD. So I for implantable cardiovertidefibrillator can help dangerously fast or irregular heartbeats. Similar to a pacemaker, an ICD is placed near the collarbone during surgery and connects to the heart with electrode tipped wires in order to send out shocks that reset the heartbeat. The maze procedure is surgery to create scars in the top half of the heart. And those scars create a pathway for electrical impulses to travel in order to maintain a regular heartbeat. Prevention for arrhythmias include a heart healthy lifestyle, controlling blood pressure, diabetes, thyroid, uh, treating thyroid problems, limiting, moderating your caffeine intake, nicotine intake, or alcohol consumption, avoiding medications that can cause arrhythmias. So some of those um, some medications can have side effects that induce arrhythmias. So just be careful. And yeah, so in summary, healthy circulation helps keep the body uh, safe and healthy. Oftentimes, making healthy life choices can help prevent circulatory issues. Some uh, things are in our control. Um, but some things are in our environment or things out of our control, like family history and um, the lifestyle of our parents maybe influences how we can live. So I hope you learned something. And yeah, if you have any questions, email me, message me in Canvas, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.